When I tell you that this morning has been a morning, it's been a morning. Uh, Pookie, our dog, uh, she has diarrhea right now. So she's been going through it this morning. She's okay. She didn't lose her appetite or anything like that. And she's not crying or anything like that. She's just been having the waterworks. Uh, so this morning, I went to Publix and I went to go get some pumpkin so it can harden up her stool. Um, so when I went to Publix, not that I was having a bad day or anything like that, but the cashier was like, hey, how you doing? And she said it in, in a, such a genuine way. It was real. Uh, and I appreciated that. And it like like turned around my whole day. Uh, and I really, really appreciated that a lot. And it just, it just reminded me that it just takes something really small to make somebody's day. It takes something so effortless, like saying hi to somebody, giving somebody a smile, asking them how they're doing. And it could just change the trajectory of somebody's entire week. Because like we always talk about, you never know what people are going through. So the fact that you can just add something to it, add some positivity to somebody else's day without it even taking any effort, that can go a, a super long way. And it went a super long way for me. And I, like I said, I appreciated it a lot. Uh, so let's just try to do that with each other. Let's try to change the trajectory of the way that each other's days are going uh, without even knowing how each other's days are going. Just add some positivity and add some light uh, to somebody's life. I love you. all yeah. Like a dream, and you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got a made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got a made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. So YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers, which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team, player, franchise, coach, front office, whatever. And we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of questions from subs, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. And speaking of the patrons, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, the new ones, the old ones. And everybody in between, I appreciate y'all showing extra love and support to the channel. Thank you for doing that. Because again, like we always say, it's not something that you have to do supporting the channel, especially supporting the channel extra is not something that you have to do. But the fact that you do it, thank you. Um, in this episode, we do have some very, very good questions, as we always do, because Team Keep It Clean continues to bring it. I appreciate y'all for that. Thank you for that. So without further ado, let's get into that. First question on this episode came from my boy, Nicholas M. He said, I believe this is the first time Lamar Jackson has an above average wide receiving core. Uh, he has been so good up to this point. Now he is loaded up on an even playing field with other quarterbacks and their receiving cores. How much better could he possibly be? Your opinion. Well, me, I... Yeah, this, I think, right now on paper is looking like Lamar Jackson and the Ravens do have the best receiving group that they've had since Lamar Jackson has been the quarterback. Uh, now, how they match up with other receiving groups is to be determined. I can't sit up here and say that, oh, yeah, this Ravens receiving group, they match up with any receiving group in the league. Because with Hollywood, we know who Hollywood is, we, but we know what, what he's capable of, but he hasn't even reached his full potential yet. But with Sammy Watkins, we know what he's capable of, but he's been injury prone. Are we going to get 17 games out of Sammy Watkins this year? Hopefully we do, and of course even more when it comes to playoffs, but we don't know. With Rashad Bateman, everything has been looking so far so good. We know that, but at the same time, he's still a rookie. This is his first year in the NFL. He's still going to have to prove himself. With Miles Boykin, there's still been a lot of questions with Miles Boykin. Is, are him and Lamar going to get on the same page? With Tylen Wallace, is he going to be able to stay healthy? And will he even be able to get enough significant playing time? With Devin Duvernay, we know how he gets down on kick return, but how will they incorporate him as a wide receiver? With James Prochet, will he make the team? And if he does make the team, will he be used and how will he be used? So you, you, you see my point is that we do have some nice receivers on paper, but is still they got to get it done on the field and that's just the receiving group now you also ask the question of how good can Lamar Jackson really be now that's up to Lamar Jackson of course it's up to the coaching staff it's up to the offensive line it's up to the receivers and tight ends it's up to everybody because everybody has a part 
and how good Lamar Jackson can be. Let me give you an example. It, with football, it takes everybody to get the thing done. It takes everybody. Now, of course, you still do have some very, very special players, but it takes everybody. Nobody can do it alone. This will always say football is better than basketball. And as a team, it's much harder. Because in basketball, it could be a one-man show. You could be driving down the court. You could shake up a couple people, drive it in, lay up, boom, he scores two points. But in football, you could have the perfect blocking from your offensive line. You got a perfect play call. Oh, yeah, we about to get this guy wide open. He, oh, that's six right there. Quarterback drops back, looks, okay. He ran a perfect route. He got some separation from the cornerback, throws it. Oh, he dropped it. Nothing. Nothing. So this is why I say it's on everybody. It's, it's on this entire unit. But as far as Lamar Jackson, he can be that much better as long as everybody else is doing their thing as well. We know what he can do. We know what he can bring. But again, there's a lot of unknowns with this Ravens team. We don't know how this offensive line is going to be. Ronnie Stanley coming back from injury. Alejandro Villanueva, how, how's he going to fit in? Kevin Zeitler, how's he going to do? Even though I expect him to just be just fine. Who's going to be our guard? Besides Zeitler, who's going to be our, our guard opposite him? We, we, we just, we don't know yet. But the potential's there for sure. It's, it's there for sure. And I do expect everybody to, to jail and everybody to start clicking and whatnot. But um, it, it, it's just going to take everybody from the top to the bottom. Next question came from my boy A.W. Juice, man. He said, my question for you about the Ravens is why do we often tend to make these two mistakes? Number one, with the Chiefs, we often blitz them very heavy, which plays into their favor. We give them cushions when our cornerbacks are lined up against them. Mahomes easily throws a quick release or a screen or on blitzes. Why don't we ever double Tyreek or Travis Kelsey? Well, that's a, that's a loaded question right there, but Ravens play scared. When they play against the Chiefs, they play scared. It's like they, they take what they do well, and a lot of times they throw it out the window. Like even last year, oh, they run the ball against the Chiefs. Chiefs cannot stop the run for nothing. What do the Ravens do? Oh, you know what? Let's, let's, let's pass. Let's go pass happy against these Chiefs. And that's been the past two times they played the Chiefs. They play scared, and they play out of their element every time they play Kansas City. And then on defense. The, the lack of adjustments, man. It's like we know Wink and them, they love to blitz. And, and we love that they love to blitz. But at the same time, hey, you blitzing this guy and that guy and that guy and that guy against Patrick Mahomes. And it's not working, my friends. It's not working. It's okay to pull up on a blitz and, and change it up. They didn't do that, got torched. Next question, also from AW Juice Man. He said, in the playoffs, I noticed that Wink will call Jimmy out on certain plays and swap him in with a defensive back a bit below him on the depth chart, like Brandon Carr in the Titans playoff game. He lined up against their tight end, and it resulted in a touchdown. Uh, this year against the Bills, he put Tremont Williams in on Stephon Diggs when it was third down and kept their drive alive, and that resulted into the Bills touchdown. By guess who? Stefan Diggs, LOL. What are your thoughts, my brother? By the way, man, prayers for you and the family, your wife and Carter. Y'all continue to be a great family. May you have all the many blessings that come your way. By the way, I may fly out to Miami game. Be great to meet you and see the, the Baltimore, Florida Ravens at their second stadium. Hey, man. Oh, that's going to be a party, man. We can't wait. But until then, we have no choice but to wait. But I, I appreciate you, man. Um, why does he take out Jimmy? It could be because Jimmy's tired. Remember, Jimmy's Jimmy been around for a little minute now. He's been around for a little minute. Uh, it also could be because Jimmy may have been dealing with an injury as well. And that injury may have been aggravating him. So they might have been like, oh, you know what? We're going to go ahead and spell Jimmy for a little bit. Have somebody else come in here and do their thing. And it also could have been because they may not want Jimmy Smith to get injured. Maybe they see something out there. Maybe they see maybe on a particular drive, Jimmy, Jimmy may not be the best Jimmy Smith that he can possibly be on that drive. So they're like, you know what? Uh, come here, get a breather real quick. Maybe you're a little, a little bit tired. Maybe you're a little bit off. Maybe you need a refresher. Maybe. So it could be for a number of reasons. But hopefully with Jimmy Smith this year, he'll be full go. Uh, hopefully he'll no injuries that'll be in the past. And you ain't got to deal with that no more. Next question came from my boy Steven S. He said, what's up, Engraven? Just started watching you literally right after the Bills game. Heartbreaker, by the way. 
<laughs> Nevertheless, love this channel. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, you keep them coming left and right faster than me, and I'm pretty quick when it comes to the news news. Uh, anyway, I'm kind of sick of the slander on Hollywood, who has proven in the playoffs, but hype. Rashad Bateman, who hasn't taken a snap to the fullest. Don't get me wrong, I like Bateman and I have a good feeling about him, but he has some big shoes to fill. Did anybody see his first game as a Raven? Caught four out of five balls for almost 150 yards and two touchdowns. Not bad for a number two, right? And don't get me started on playoffs when nobody can contain him. So like I said, I like Bateman and I actually think he will be the reason the field is going to spread out for Hollywood. What are your thoughts? P.S. I know it's lengthy. I apologize for that, but I look forward to sending more questions. And just like Hollywood's release at the line... I'm out. This wasn't lengthy at all. This was just fine. It's the same thing I've been saying, too. I, I agree with you. Um, I love what we've seen from Rashad Bateman so far. But, again, we've just seen practice. We've seen OTAs. We've seen mini camps. We've seen that. But we haven't seen him on the actual football field. So ain't nothing wrong with being hyped. Ain't nothing wrong with being excited for Ravens' first-round draft pick at the wide receiver position. Especially a first-round draft pick that a lot of people wanted the Ravens to select. So when they selected him, they got extra hyped. But he still has to prove it on an NFL level. He still has to. Uh, but we're we going to see very soon. Very soon. And I don't even think that he, he has to fill Hollywood shoes. I don't think there's any extra pressure on him because of what Hollywood did in his first game. No, I, I don't think it should be looked at like that. And I don't think it is looked at like that. Because, yeah, Hollywood came on to seeing his first NFL game down here at the crib. But, and, and he just, he went off. He went all the way off. But I don't think Rashad Bateman has to look at that and like, oh, man, I got to do that in my first game too. Now, if he does, hey, no problem. <laughs> we, we won't be mad at all. But... He just has to come in, do his thing. When your number is called, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone, answer. Because now with Rashad Bateman, but also with Sammy Watkins too, and Hollywood, and Mark Andrews being back, like, and, and the coaches, the T. Martin and Keith Williams, this should really open up the field a lot for the Ravens. And... The coaching staff can help them that much more, but the players and personnel, they help them out that much more as well. So with those two hand in hand, it should open it up for everybody. And that can take a bit of pressure off Rashad Bateman. Next question came from my boy, David C. He said, what's up, Engraven? How's the fam? Oh, we're doing good. We're doing great, actually. I appreciate it. He said, I've been a listener for a while now, and you keep commenting on other organizations' lists. I'm also aware you don't like making lists, and I've been wondering why that is. I just, it's, it's not something that really interests me like that. When they be like, oh, hey, who's your top five wide receivers in the NFL? And I'm like, oh. And then I feel like I always end up missing out on somebody. And I just feel, it, it's just, that's just not my thing. I just never liked it. And, and, and still don't like it. Uh, but again, I'll go over somebody's list. But me, my own, that, that ain't my thing. Uh, and he said, also, who do you think will be a breakout star of the Baltimore Ravens this up? coming season and have a great day hey david you have a great day too my man um breakout star for the ravens Ooh, breakout star i feel like hollywood is such an easy answer uh reason i would say hollywood is because of what we talked about previously with what's around him now um as far as the coaching staff and the other wide receivers but if i had to pick somebody else besides Hollywood, I can't pick out Lamar, he's already a star, <laughs> but I uh, can't pick out Mark Andrews, he's like, I don't think Mark Andrews is a star, because only like NFL people know about him, um, but I guess, I, so I guess he's an NFL kind of star, um, if you're familiar with tight ends, but, um, hmm, ooh, with him being another year in the system, with him being another year more comfortable, with him being another year healthy, Deshaun Elliott. Next question came from my guy, Manuel. Shout out to Mexico. He said, I was thinking the other day about what Lamar Jackson said about leaving a legacy with the Ravens by winning the Super Bowl like January Joe did with us. But if you think about it, he is setting the standard for future quarterbacks after him, just like Brady did in New England and now in Tampa Bay. Just let it process in your head. We only remember those quarterbacks that have won a Super Bowl in general than the ones who don't, which means for us Ravens fans, if the next QB after Lamar Jackson doesn't win at least one Super Bowl, then for us, he was just a bleep in our memory 
injuries until the next one gets that Lombardi. I have to say, uh, I disagree with that. Reason being, because it, it all depends on what franchise you're talking about. With the Ravens, I felt like it was something in my beard. Uh, but with the Ravens, um, we remember Joe Flacco, but that, that's because he came right before Lamar Jackson. But, and he won a Super Bowl, of course. But we also remember Kyle Bowler. We remember him. He ain't win the Super Bowl. Uh, we remember Trent Dilford, Elvis Gerback, uh, Chris Redman, Steve McNair, um, who Anthony Wright, Tyrod Taylor, Troy Smith. And that's not everybody. I know it's some more in there that I missed. But we remember uh, a lot of the quarterbacks on the team, regardless if they won a Super Bowl or not. Now, the ones that win more. Whether they won a Super Bowl or not, the ones who win a lot more, they're remembered a lot more because they're usually around a lot more than the ones that lose a lot more. But I don't think, a, a, and a Super Bowl obviously puts you in people's memories forever. But it is not the end all be all for people to remember who you are. Now that, of course, you stick out more with that trophy, but I, I, I don't think it... Um, it makes people remember you more. Now, another thing I said, it also depends on the franchise because with the Ravens, they have not been around for very long at all. They've been around for, what, 25 years? Getting ready to be 26, I believe. So they haven't been around for very long. So their list of quarterbacks that you have to remember is very short. But you look at another, any other franchises, not any of them, but most of them, they've been around for way longer than that. So... Yeah, so for them, then your theory could be applied a, a bit more for them. Um, but even with the Patriots, like we remember Ryan Mallett. We remember Brian Hoyer. Uh, we remember um, the guy right before Drew Bledsoe. Uh, we remember Jimmy Garoppolo, even though he uh, this is a little different because he came after Tom Brady. But anyway, but yeah, I feel you though. So, but if, if I had to think about a franchise and, and then and I had to think about like well, even with the Eagles, we remember Donovan McNabb. He ain't never won no Super Bowl, but yo, you get my point. Anyway, he said, my second question is for Team Keep It Clean, and that I feel many of us don't express how thankful we are to have you on your YouTube channel. Uh, we get Ravens content with honesty uh, and no other stuff uh, from the front office on what you can say and what you can't. And for that, I thank you. You have built a great community and content that everybody of Team Keep It Clean should be thankful for. Stay safe and let's get Lamar his first of many Super Bowls. Oh, man. I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I, I appreciate y'all. Um, I, I appreciate y'all a lot because y'all have, uh, man, that caught me off guard, man. Um, y'all have uh, just made a huge difference uh, in just the fact that we are able to do this. Um, y'all make it fun, uh, the positivity that y'all spread, uh, the respect, um, just the support, even when, when we bring other people on too, I, I'll go over to their channels and then I see y'all on there and I'll be like, oh yeah, that, that's what, that's what it was for. That's what it was for, uh, to help other people out. I remember, um, a while ago, just, uh, well, it was years ago. One of the biggest things that I wanted to do on here uh, was to, and I used to say it in the videos too, uh, and, it, and it still sticks with me, and, and I think about it a, a lot of the times. I just, I just wanted to make somebody's day. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to make somebody's day. I wanted to have a positive impact on somebody. Try to make somebody smile for that day, for whatever video we put out. That, that was a big goal of mine um, because... I know from firsthand experience, like if when I'm watching somebody like, oh, man, I, I love when this they, they do this in their videos. or I love this about their videos. or I just love the videos, period. or love their personality in the videos or whatnot. And it makes a big difference because especially if it's something that you watch all the time, like we got TV shows that we watch every week. Some TV shows, they only come out once a week. Um, and then you, you sitting there anticipating, you waiting, you waiting, waiting, oh, I can't wait till this new episode comes out next week. And then you watch it and it's like, yes, let's go. But then you got to wait another week. So it's like, oh man. But as, as that anticipation builds, you look forward to what you're going to expect in that next episode. And you look forward to whatever different personalities you're going to see in that next episode. Um, but on here, 
I just wanted it to be where people can engage with each other. People can have conversations about whatever. And like I said, it is all done with respect and it's all done with love and ain't none. That's why it's, it's team. Keep it clean. All that, all that, the foolishness. No, we don't tolerate none of that stuff, man. We don't. Um, cause it's just, it's, it's, it's no sense in, in tolerating it. Uh, that's why we always tell people protect your energy cause it's so important and it is something that I, I still got to work on too. Protecting my, we all got to work on it, but protecting energy is so important. Um, but the, the, the positivity outweighs the negativity by a million on here by a million. I, I'll see a, a negative comment or something, somebody saying something, and, and it's, it's, it's usually something that's like, and I hate to use this word, but it's usually something that's, that's very, very stupid. Usually when I see a negative comment, it's usually something that it is, is very, very stupid. Uh, and you could tell that somebody just, somebody just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And it happens. It happens. Some, day, some days we wake up and we just, we ain't feeling it like that that day. You can always tell. Uh, you see people complain over this and that and people try to say, oh, you need to do this for your chair. You need to do that for your chair. You need to do that for your chair. Da, 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 da. And some people give like le legitimate uh, criticisms and legitimate uh, suggestions and whatnot. And then there's some people that they just looking to critique something just to critique something because they just want to say, oh, yeah, th this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. We got people who only comment on a video when it's something that they don't agree with. When they want to point out something wrong, we got just we got it's it's it's, it's so many different energies that that come to the channel, man, and that's fine though. Again, the only thing we want is that it's done with respect. That's it. That's it. As long as it's done with respect, hey, that's cool. But if you bring in the negative energy and that negative vibe, nah, you can keep it, man. You can keep it. So I I, I appreciate you. Um. I appreciate your appreciation of the channel because I appreciate y'all that much more, man. I appreciate all these questions that we get uh, on a daily basis, just all the support that we get uh, on a daily basis and just everything, man, because it, it, it makes a, a big difference in my life, uh, my family's life. Cause my family, they check out the channel too. Friends, they check out the channel too. People that I know personally, they, they check out the channel and, and they rock with it. They look at the comments. They look at all that. They they see that stuff, man, and it just uh, it's it's a privilege, man. It, it's a privilege that that I appreciate. So thank you, man. You well. Shout out to you. Shout out to you watching from Mexico. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate everybody. This was a, a very fun episode of Question from Subscribers. Like it always is, man. I love y'all. Y'all keep your heads up, and we out.